world been treating you? Like a baby treats a diaper. Yeah, back to work for the Oklahoma Sooners after the victory over Texas and the Red River showdown. These next four games will get tougher. Okay, the degree of difficulty gets tougher every week beginning this Saturday with the road trip against Kansas State, a team that the Sooners have never lost to this century in Manhattan. 7-0 in the 21st century in the Little Apple. The Sooners come in about a two-touchdown favorite to defeat the Wildcats this Saturday. Before we break down Oklahoma and Kansas State, the Sooners now in the top 10 in the latest AP and coaches poll. They were outside the top 10, but moved up three spots from 12 to 9. Big thing when you're watching this Oklahoma Sooner team, I'm sure the magical question pops up. How come the Sooners can't hold leads? Because we, we've seen it the last three weeks. I mean, Baylor, a few weeks ago, up 28-10. Not only did the Sooners see that lead shrink, eventually Baylor took the lead. Week after that, Iowa State, up 14 to nothing, and then eventually 17-3, to only to see the Sooners go into somewhat of a shell and to see Iowa State put up points, which just stunned us. And in that game, the Sooners got beat. And, of course, last week, the 20 to nothing lead, but because of inadequacies in the red zone because the Sooners, and I'll, I'll, we'll talk about this in a little bit detail later on, were hit by the penalty bug and Texas just had that extra fight in them. We saw the Sooners lose that lead, but thankfully not the game. So for the last three weeks, it's become not just a coincidence, not just bad luck, but becoming a pattern where the Sooners have terrific first quarters, but we see them uh, struggle. And in the case of Baylor, a game that Baylor you know, very well could have won. And according to some people, last week, a game against Texas in which some feel like the Longhorns should have won. And the week before that, a game against Iowa State where the Cyclones did win. So what I'm trying to tell you is that the Sooners have got to try to find some way to break out this pattern where they can be just as effective in the second half as they were in the first half. I mean, the third quarters of all three of these previous games – have been head scratchers and not been good at all. And I think the one thing we have to remember about this team is that even though they're pretty good, sometimes they do show that it's not quite the same Oklahoma team as we've seen in the past. For example, C.D. Lamb, and I know he's had the battle injury. You know, this guy's got a bright future for the Sooners, but is he D.D. Westbrook of his caliber? Absolutely not. And if you look on the offensive side with Trey Sermon and with Abdul Adams, who Adams had to build the injury bug as well, but taking the injury part aside, are those two guys on the same level as Samaj P. Ryan and Joe Mixon? Question asked, answer is no. So you kind of get what I'm telling you. Unless you're the University of Alabama where you can afford in a game to let off the gas pedal and still win and not have people question it, you know, in the case of Oklahoma, they're going to have to put together a star effort throughout the entire game. They can't just go through lackadaisical stages because teams that will play them will adjust and will do their best to get back into the game. And we've seen that each of the last three weeks. I have no doubt that the Sooners were the more talented team against Texas and definitely against Iowa State and Baylor. You know, those two teams they should have handled with ease, but of course, Iowa State, they didn't. The Sooners, as talented as they are, and they're worthy of being a top 10 team. Do not have enough talent, though, to where they can afford to take it just a little bit easy, lose a little bit of focus, and still not have the score affected. You know, the Sooners have got to find a way to make sure to be more efficient. How can they do that? Well, for one, got to be more efficient in the red zone. We've seen them settle for field goals way too often. And, yes, you know, three is a lot better than nothing, but three will never be as good as seven. Baker Mayfield needs to be a little bit more effective in the third quarter, because if you've noticed, the third quarter of these last three games has, has not been stellar for the Sooners. In fact, we've seen the Sooners uh, lose a little bit of that edge, okay? And I'm not just putting it all on Baker Mayfield's shoulders. So, you know, the Sooners have really got to help their defense out by offensively being able to sustain drives coming out of the locker room entering the second half. Sooners will take on the Kansas State team, and, and we, we talked about the Sooners and the win that they had against Texas, the fact that you know, they're 5-1, and OU's in the top 10, still a contender in the Big 12, and because of losses suffered by other teams across the country this past week alone by Auburn, by Clemson, and by both Washington schools, all four ranked in the top 10 and going down in defeat, the Sooners, you know, they're still not out of think of things in terms of the national championship pitcher. That's the perspective you have to look at it from Oklahoma. For Kansas State's perspective, they've been a disappointment this year. They're at 3-3 three and three 
And right now, the focus for them is not national championships. It's not about winning the Big 12 or getting to the Big 12 championship game. Right now, the focus for Kansas State with only six weeks to go and just three wins is just getting to a bowl game. All right, because if if they lose as expected this weekend, you got to win three of your last five if you're the Wildcats, and you, know, you still have difficult matchups down the road. You know, playing Texas Tech, playing Oklahoma State, um, West Virginia, just to name some. Now, the Wildcats started off nice with two and zero, but then once they played a Power Five school, and it really wasn't even a good Power Five school either. In fact, it's one of the bottom feeders of the SEC in Vanderbilt. K State's defense has you know, done okay, I think, but the offense. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. The offense for Kansas State has uh, you know, kind of just disappeared. Um, as a matter of fact, only seven points against the Vanderbilt Commodores. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And then we, we saw K-State lose a heartbreaker in overtime recently to Texas. And then last week against highly ranked TCU, the Wildcats only mustered six points. Now, granted, they had a drive that um, resulted in a turnover when they got close, and then a touchdown that got nullified by an offensive pass interference penalty. And for those out there who think I'm picking on Kansas State, I'm not. I'm sure some people are saying, well, what about Jesse Ertz, the quarterback? He got hurt against Texas. But bottom line, though, K-State was suffering some offensive uh, problems even before Ertz's injury. So the, the Wildcats, you look at what they did last week, they, they weren't effective on third or fourth down. Two of 16 on third and fourth down conversions as opposed to TCU in that win over K-State where the Horned Fox were 9 of 18 on third downs. So, you know, defensively, I don't think K-State is a bad team. I think special teams are fine. But offensively, of course, a team that doesn't specialize in throwing, and they haven't for quite a while under Bill Snyder, is a team that will run zone read. But they have not been very effective running the ball. I think they had only 60 or 70 total yards of rushing um, we could go against Horn Frogs. That's game, set, match. I mean, TCU won the game by 20, but you never had a feeling that K-State was going to win that game because the offense couldn't pick itself up from the ground. So entering a game like this, the Sooners should be able to handle Kansas State. I'm not saying that they'll just blow them out like they did a couple of years ago in that 55 to nothing game, but it should be a convincing Sooner win provided that Oklahoma can avoid hurting themselves. And I... I did have, by the way, before I give you my final score prediction, I did have a subscriber bring up an interesting point. Why didn't you mention the penalties in last week's game against Texas? Okay, And when I watched the game the second time, it was more obvious to me that the officials, and if you've watched my show over the years, okay, and I've been on here since 2009, the last thing I do is criticize officiating. Okay, Very rarely does it happen. In fact, you're going to have to look pretty hard for me to criticize officials. Okay. The way I look at officiating, they're humans. They're doing the best that they can. And maybe I'm a little biased because I was a uh, umpire, um, granted, on you know youth level way back when. So I do have a little bit of sympathy for officials because they're not going to catch everything. And again, I believe that they are doing the best they can. I will rip them, though, if they just flat out blatantly don't follow the rules, okay? If I do think that there's injustice big time. And when I watched that Texas game... Um, Oboe was getting held like crazy. I will give Oklahoma that. I mean, he was getting held a lot and wasn't getting called. And you, you watch the Oklahoma game against Texas third quarter when OU's touchdown to Dimitri Flyers got called back because Orlando Brown got caught holding. It was a legitimate hold. So you're thinking, why didn't the officials call holding on Texas when they flat out called holding on OU? And we didn't really see the, offici the officials really pick up the slack against Texas until the fourth quarter. Okay, so I will give Oklahoma a little bit of justification because, yeah, it wasn't exactly officiated even. But still, though, you can't tell me that that was the only problem with Oklahoma in that particular game as far as how Texas came from behind. Longhorns and Sam Ellinger had a little bit to do with that as well. And in this game, the Sooners cannot leave it up to the hands of the officials. In other words, big thing for the Sooners is defensively stay disciplined. If you're not lined up properly, if you don't get your calls, then Kansas State's offense can not only march down the field, they can take a lot of time off the clock as well. That's what uh, Kansas State's offense is about, is being, um, as Bob, as, uh, Bob Stoops' brother Mike once said, being very deliberate. Okay, They don't mind taking time off the clock. And for the Sooners on offense, look, play discipline, hold on to the ball. Um, the big thing is don't force anything in a matchup like this. I think this is a game where the Sooners, once again, should, should get off to a good start. But of course, the $64,000 question, can the Sooners keep 
their foot on the gas pedal. That's all I care about. Can they keep their foot on the gas pedal? And unlike the previous three games, can they win and win without causing major anxiety in the fourth quarter for them and for the Sooner fan base? Final thoughts on this game. I don't foresee the Sooners having a lot of difficulty in this one, provided that they come ready to play and provided that they've got the Texas game out of their memory bank as much as possible. It was a nice win, but celebrating time for that is over. Now you got to go on the road. you got to play in front of the Wildcat crowd. Look, the Sooners historically in contemporary times have done well against the Wildcats. I don't think they've lost in Manhattan since 1998. And I foresee the winning streak at Kansas State to continue for OU. I'm going to go 34-13 Sooners to win and to win comfortably. A reminder, I will have my three picks coming up sometime on Friday. It's going to be a special edition, by the way, of uh, my three picks. And you'll see why uh, when we broadcast the show. Again, I've got the Sooners winning 34-13 over Kansas State. And for the Wildcats, yeah, it's going to be tough for them just to be bowl eligible. But for the Sooners, another win. And, hey, they continue in the discussion for the Big 12 championship and maybe bigger things down the road, which I didn't think I'd be saying just a while back. Boomer Sooner.